The night wanes on as Detective Lee finishes up his paperwork at the APD precinct. The casual conversation with his co-worker is interrupted by a call from Virginia Vision. This is the story that she told. The Grim Reaper arrived at 6.13 in the afternoon. He came to her house to murder her and her children. In order to stop him, she killed him. Afraid that, as a synthesoid, she would not be treated fairly by the justice system, she decided to hide her actions by burning the body and scattering the ashes at 37,000 feet. Unbeknownst to her, a man, Leon Kinski, recorded a compromising video of the body's destruction. Weeks later, Mr. Kinski contacted her. He threatened to release the video if her family did not leave the area. That night, she told her family that she was in a meeting with an acquaintance for dinner. Instead, she visited Leon Kinski and refused his offer. Leon Kinski shot at her and accidentally killed his son CK. Fearful of the story that Mr. Kinski might tell, she made her fist as hard as diamond and hit him in the head. The blow put him in a coma that he's unlikely to recover from. Returning home, she noted that even though he did not know her destination, he was aware of her departure. Vision cannot tell a lie. If questioned about the night, Virginia continues to admit, the vision would most likely reveal her personal guilt. As such, while he was recharging, she accessed his central coding. By adjusting the code, she modified his understanding of that evening's events. He would then believe that she never left the night CK was killed. She used the same process some months later, after her son was murdered by the Avenger spy, Victor Mancha. She had wished to kill Victor herself. However, she knew that he was under the protection of Earth's mightiest heroes. She possessed neither the training nor the experience necessary to fight these mightiest heroes. In contrast, her husband could fight them, could indeed defeat them. Of course, the Vision, a hero who had saved the world 37 times, would never act against the team to which he had dedicated his life. Not unless she clandestinely accessed his central coding and adjusted his motivations and memories, which she proceeded to do. She took control of her husband's free will and forced him to act as he never could or would have acted. Once the Avengers were defeated, she arrived on the scene and she killed Victor Mancha. Virginia finishes her story by taking a sip out of the water vase of Zen Law and hangs up the phone. Last September, with the leaves just beginning to hint at the fall to come, the visions of Virginia moved into their house at 616 Hickey Branch Lane, Arlington, Virginia, 21301. The visions house was located in Cherryvale, a pleasant neighborhood about 15 miles west of Washington, DC. Most of the visions neighbors worked downtown and they talked often about the traffic on 66 or Lee Highway. On the weekends, they tended to stay in Virginia, though they had often lamented that they should go into the city. The museums are so nice, and the kids would have a good time. Very few of them were from the area originally. Most had moved to DC after college and worked for Congress or the president. They made nothing, and they lived off nothing. But that was unimportant. They were young, and they wanted to save the world. Eventually, they met someone and fell in love and had children. With bills to pay, they left their small government jobs, and they became lobbyists, lawyers, and managers. They moved out to the suburbs for the schools. They made the compromises that are necessary to raise a family. Vision goes to greet his wife on the couch. Virginia informs him that their daughter, Vivian, is still upset with her. Also, she killed their dog. Virginia begins to malfunction, and Vision asks her about what is happening to her, and she tells him that she had just drunk from the flying water face of Zen Law. Currently, the corrosive effects of the liquid are working through her system. 
This will cause some problems with her corporeal and incorporeal receptors. The vision begs her to become incorporeal and let the water phase through her, but she refuses. She just wants to rest her head on her husband's shoulder. The vision sits down with his wife, and she tells him that she uploaded her confession to the police into their shared drive. It will be of use to him later. Of course, the vision refuses to use this confession. Instead, he will correct her embellishment to the authorities. He is adamant in his belief until his wife helps him realize that his admission would result in his imprisonment and thereafter the isolation and or death of their daughter. She reminds him that he is not only the vision of the Avengers, he is her husband. He is the father of their children. All the rest can be put aside. Virginia begins to lose consciousness, but as she still clings to life, she leaves her husband with one last thing. After she consumed the flower, the twice-eaten Everbloom from Mount Wondagore, she saw the future. She saw the vision destroy the future. For them. For her. And she could not let him go through with it. He is the vision of the Avengers. He saved the world 37 times. And she saved it once. And Virginia admits that it was nice. No, says the vision. It was kind. Virginia did the right thing. Or she did the wrong thing. Or she just did what everyone does. She saved what she could. And when she was done, she was done. Wanda tells Vivian the entirety of the events that had taken place in hopes that the child will find it in her heart to forgive her mother. Vivian does not understand why someone will go through so much to protect so little. Parents sacrifice their lives for their children. Then, children become parents and sacrifice their own lives. So much lost, with so little gained in return. Wanda tells her that it is what it means to be a parent. The idea of going to the ends of the earth for one's child becomes all too real when life turns for worse. Spring comes, and Vivian must return to school. The Vision offers her lunch, but she does not eat. He tells his daughter that he understands that much, but perhaps his daughter wants to be more like the other children. Vivian chuckles before saying goodbye to her father. She is Vivian Vision. Two months ago, her uncle killed her brother. In response, her mother killed her uncle, and then herself. And now, she is a teenage synthesoid being raised by an Avenger. She is not the same as the others. With that, Vivian floats off into the distance and makes her way to school. The Vision watches his daughter coast past the horizon and turns to head back inside the house. The newly built Sparky Dog, courtesy of Tony Stark and the Scarlet Witch, barks in excitement. The Vision joyfully hushes his friend before raising a hand against the sensor, causing a passageway to appear underneath his sofa. He makes his way down the passageway as he sings, Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream merrily 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 life is but a dream